shit A piece of shit Oh, Jay You suck Hello, and welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself I'm your host, Jake Letizia, and this is the uh, podcast where I stare at a camera and I talk to myself. What's up? Episode 26, you fucking crazy kids, man. Halfway to, more than halfway to 50. Holy shit. And 52 is a full year podcast because there's fucking 52 weeks in a year and we do one a week. So goddamn. We're a little over halfway to a goddamn year. Holy shit. Isn't that insane? Seven months, technically. This this will be the start of the seventh month of doing this podcast. I think that math checks out. Holy shit. We're here. We're doing it. I thought I was going to be done after two. I thought I was going to do three of them and go, yeah, why? I don't need to be talking for that long. People don't need to be listening to me for an hour every week. <laughs> and if people think they do need to be listening to me for an hour every week, maybe I should deprive them of that because I don't know if it's going to be good for their brain. But you know what? I'm, I'm intoxicating your brain right now, okay? Whether I'm good for you or not, I'm glad you're listening, okay? <laughs> maybe I'm permanently fucking you up and giving you the wrong ideas. I don't think that's true. But keep listening, baby. <laughs> anyway. Uh, some housekeeping up top, I guess, is uh, our show happened like a week ago, I think now, two, one or two weeks ago, I don't know, Jake and Josh are not funny, we had another successful Sunday show, it was great, it was very, uh, the c- comedians were very hilarious, and then me and Josh were, uh, we did some fucking strange goddamn bits that that were very fun, and it, uh, it, it, simultaneously horrified and uh invigorated the crowd (laughs) listen dude at jake and josh are not funny if you're not gonna laugh you're gonna come okay that's how it works (laughs) no no one came at least i don't know that could have happened i don't know listen i don't know what's happening to people's bodies in the crowd they could be doing whatever they feel is necessary underneath their pants. I don't know what's happening. I can't see through clothing. I'm not fucking Superman. What I'm saying is we did some weird, crazy bits and people uh, were horrified and laughing at the same time. So it was very fun. Uh, next show is uh, September 1st. Uh, another Sunday, exact same time. Uh, the show starts at 7.30, but the doors are at 7, so come at 7 p.m. Uh, at Pine Box Rock Shop in Brooklyn, New York. Guys, it's Labor Day, September 2nd. It's fucking Labor Day, September 2nd. So you know what that means? That means Sunday is a second Saturday. So I know for a fact, especially if you live in Westchester or the city, you're going to be out and about in New York City getting fucking wasted. Okay, to those of you in Westchester, don't go to White Plains that Sunday. Go to fucking New York City. Go to Brooklyn. Go to Pine Box Rock Shop and fucking black out, get blackout drunk while you watch some awesome comedy. Okay, it might be better come to the show, get blackout, so you don't even know if it was a good show or not, and then the next day you'll be like, I think that was good. I got drunk enough. To have stayed there for a while, so sure. <laughs> no, it's going to be a good show. Come on down. Uh, I already know you're going to be fucking getting wild because every time there's a three-day weekend, everyone's like, I mean, I mean let's get fucked up. So at least uh, come get fucked up at Pine Box and watch our lovely, lovely free show. Um, and yeah, we'll all have a good time. I'll have a drink with you and it'll be dope. So, yeah, that's how it's going. Guys, I I I am frustrated. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Now we're in the if you if you're just listening to this now, this is the podcast now. It's just I start saying random shit. And this what we're going to start with this. I'm fucking frustrated. I don't know why. I keep just being just, Ugh! you know, just randomly like, are you kidding? 
and it it's taken me back to when I was in fucking high school. Because in high school, I was this little angry boy, and I I've been having explosive just. Oh, no, no. I'm becoming my brother a little bit. Like my brother does that. He does this weird just, and then like will like hit the his desk. Because the link won't go fast enough on his computer. But with him, he just does it. Like, he just does it blatantly in front of people. I at least have the wherewithal to... I've just lately, like, in my own private time, been grunting to myself. You know? I've been frustrated in the shadows. No one sees me behaving like this, but it just bursts out of nowhere. Like, I'll be at the drive through and I'll get McDonald's, and then I'll just be in my car thinking about, like, you're getting fucking McDonald's again? Like, what the fuck are you doing? You haven't exercised in fucking two weeks. Like, what are you doing, you pudgy little nothing? And then the the drive through person will come over and be like, here's your food. I'll go, oh, thank you. And then I'll close the window, drive away, and then when I get around the corner and no one can see me, I go, you fucking get fucking McDonald's again. Just weird, angry at myself shit. Like, it's not even at anyone else. Which is good. I'm not directing this frustration towards anyone else. But it's like, I don't know. I I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know why it's happening. Maybe just stress. I have general stress right now. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe I'm worried about uh, the future. I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit worried about the future, but things are going well right now. I'm working on a project right now that uh, I can't talk about, but you guys will find out about soon enough. That's really fucking exciting. Maybe it's that. Maybe I have anxiety not knowing where that's going to go, not knowing if it's going to be just a one-off thing or if it's going to continue into something bigger that'll hopefully, you know, change my life up a little bit. Maybe that's it. Maybe I just feel stuck. But that's not true because changes have been happening. I don't know. Maybe I just feel like I'm not doing. There's more I can be doing. I have that a lot. Do you guys have that? I have a lot where I just feel like I could be doing more. Like you ever have moments where you just sit there and you go, holy, how many hours are there in a day? And I spent that many doing that. I spent three hours playing video games today. What the fuck am I doing? I'm not utilizing my time enough. And guess what? Tomorrow, I'm going to be dead. You know? Like, there's so many things I want to do. There's so many things I would like to accomplish. And then this, the actual things I spend time on are wasteful nothingness. <laughs> the amount of times I've played through the game Bioshock bums out my soul. You know? Like, with the remastered version of that video game, like, I must have played through that game at least a hundred (laughs) times. Which bothers my fucking soul. (laughs) You know? At least with online games, I stopped playing fucking shooting games like, Hey, what's up, teenage kid? Let me shoot you. Oh, what'd you just say? The N-word? Oh, that's cool, dude. Let me mute my mic. I've I've done I've talked about this before I think but like I've done, I've Fortnite I can't play okay I'm too old I've talked about this with Gears of War Gears of War was my game but like I don't I those games I don't I'm not fully aware of how much time I'm dumping into it but a video game that's a single player game and I'm just playing the campaign I'm fully aware of how much time I'm wasting into it because it has a finite loop, you know? I know the beginning, I know the middle, I know the end of it. And every time I get to the end of the new God of War, I go, Jesus Christ, I beat this game again? What the fuck am I doing? And then I justify it in my brain. I'm like, oh, new game plus. With new game plus, you go through it faster because you have you know, you're, have all this improved weaponry. So it's you, you beat the game much faster. Also, you could skip the cutscenes in new game plus. So really, it's like half the length of the game actually is. But still, when the game is 15 hours and then you play it through it again without cutscenes, it's still fucking five to six hours. So what, Jake, are you doing?
Stop playing video games, you fucking moron. <laughs> I guess it's just when I get stressed out or I get frustrated. That's my, that's my, that relieves anxiety, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm an anxious person. Maybe I have, I don't know. It's funny in music now it's being manifested like anxiety, like there's so there are so much there's so much shit about popping pills and zannies and like kids being depressed and having anxiety in popular rap music that the other subset of rap music is criticizing the main set of rap by being like, "Oh, you guys are all fake fucking anxiety. You guys are just making money off of people's pain." But then it's weird because those rappers are going, oh, you're making money off of people's pain. I actually have the pain. So that they're trying to be like, no, I'm the real anxiety guy, which is a weird thing. I don't know. Also, it's hard. It's a weird line to tell. It's hard to find out if someone genuinely has a disorder and is conveying that in their art or if or if they're just doing it because they're like, well, people have anxiety. Why don't I fucking say I have anxiety? There's some blatant cases like this YouTuber fucking was selling merch that was like, I'm anxious as fuck. Anxious AF. Like, what? No, dude. You're not going to put your anxiety on display for the world. But maybe you are if you're an artist and you're portraying it. But that's different, I guess, because you're conveying it through music and you're also not you're not being corny and shitty about it. I don't know. A person with anxiety doesn't wear a shirt to a party that says anxious as fuck. He might awkwardly be like, oh, yeah, I don't know what to say. And then the other people around him will be like, what? And then you'll be like, ah, I shouldn't have even said that. (laughs) And they'll be like, what? And then you'll be like, I'm going to (laughs) leave. That's an anxious person. Hey, what? No, I'm just, you know, I'm nervous because I'm kind of anxious. I don't know. I got, I have problems like with small talk. And the person's like, oh, okay. And then you're like, yeah, anyway, do you? Like, do you feel that way too? And they're like, what? And you're like, oh, (laughs) no, I just, because, hey, this is a party, right? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Can you add to my fucking sentences, dude? (laughs) Can you add to the conversation we're clearly having with one another, another, dude? One another? Yeah, one another. Sometimes I get nervous and I say things wrong. Dude, I don't know what the, who are you? Dude, uh, (laughs) bye. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Someone was explaining their anxiety the other day, and then I was like, oh, fuck, do I have that? (laughs) There's a lot of... I don't know. I should see a therapist. (laughs) There's a lot of, like, disorders or just things in general where I'm like, I don't have that shit. And then, uh, you know, I hear about what the symptoms are, and I'm like, oh, I have those exact symptoms. (laughs) Should I go get checked out? I don't know. Maybe I'm riddled with mental disorders <laughs> and I'm just diving into relationships and friendships and uh, not knowing about them. Then everyone goes, hey, dude, something's wrong with your brain. And I'm like, oh, shit. Let me go talk to somebody about it. I don't know. We'll see. Whatever. Well, now I'm the cunt. <laughs> now I'm the cunt who's like. Let me talk on my podcast about how my brain's fucked. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be like that. I'm just trying to, just trying to figure it out, man. Anyway, at this point, this thing is just, this thing is my therapy session. This thing is just me fucking pontificating to myself to uh, try and not, you know, try and not be so insane all the time. Try and, this is, a, this is basically a. This is an open therapy. This is a, this is a uh, a public therapy session. That's what this is. It's just people watching me going, "Oh wow, yeah, Jake's a fucking weird guy, huh?" <laughs> Somebody was telling my brother how they listen to my podcast, <laughs> and he says the kid said to my brother, he was like, "Yeah, the other day I was listening to your brother's podcast, and uh, he." He started talking about how he likes rain, and then for the next 15 minutes, he started talking about how he fucking hates the rain. And I said to my brother, I was like, well, did he like it? He goes, no, yeah, he thought it was really funny. (laughs) 
which is cool, which is cool. And like, I feel like I love that guy. I love him for listening to the podcast, but I just love how that's how he described it. Like, that's how I would love to describe the podcast to anybody. What's your podcast about? Well, one person who likes it says, uh, (laughs) <laughs> that's just it's just, hey what's what's jake's podcast like oh well the other day he talked about how he likes the rain for a minute and then for 15 minutes after talked about how much he fucking hates the rain and then everyone in the world in unison goes oh i don't need to listen to that <laughs> and the guy goes no but it's funny and they go what maybe i will check it out I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, let me go to these notes. <laughs> I don't know. Caffeine, dude. I'm trying to stop drinking caffeine. I don't know why. I don't know what caff. I really don't know what. <sighs> Jake, start a sentence. <laughs> I just started like three sent. I just started and stopped three different fucking sentences. I just, I just, what well, with caffeine. Uh, and Jake, you're on a podcast. Say actual sentences, please. <laughs> oh. All right, I got to stop saying my name in the fucking third person like a goddamn cack. Um So yeah, I uh no, caffeine. The other day I had a lot of work to do, so I went to work and then I was doing all these business meetings and then like uh <laughs> I sound like such a douche. I was doing all these fucking business meetings, bro. Dude, I was fucking making connects doing business goddamn means, bro. Dude, basically I make dollars, bro. What I do is I go to the market, I fucking get some Microsoft, I get some fucking Amazon, because Bezos is the fucking king of fucking money right now, bro. And I fucking make business connections, I fucking do meetings in New York City, I get coffee, and I fucking crush, bro. That's what I do. No, but I was doing, I was, you know, some uh, meetings for the thing I'm working on, and um, I didn't have coffee Till like, it was like 6 p.m. I realized, oh, fuck, I didn't have any coffee. And I felt good, to be honest with you. I felt maybe better than I do when I drink caffeine. And then I really had, like, th- took a hard look at myself and was like, why do I drink so much goddamn caffeine? What is it doing for me? Is it just fucking up my sleep? Because I don't, like, if I drink caffeine at midnight, I can go to bed at 1. And then in the morning, I feel like half of my brain is dislocated. That's what it feels like when I drink caffeine and then go to sleep. If you, I wake up and it feels like half of my brain is dislocated from the other half of it. It feels like there's something dislodged in my head ball. Which is not a term I created. I got that from The Darkness, the video game. So I guess sometimes video games are worth playing for weird references that happened just now. But anyway, um, yeah, I've, I, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you guys have that feeling? I guess, again, maybe that's grogginess, which I found out the definition of in the other podcast I did, because that's what this podcast is about. Finding out the definition of the simplest of goddamn words. But yeah, I, I I don't know. I feel fucking awful. And then, but what I ha- well, then what I try to do, I don't know. All the things they try to tell you about fixing your sleep, I feel like it doesn't work. Like I fall asleep watching the TV every day, right? Every night. And my brother told me, "Oh yeah, you don't ha- you don't go into REM sleep when you have the TV on. Like you never go into REM sleep." And I was like, "Well, what happens in REM sleep?" And he goes, "Well, that like that's why that's when you dream. Like you dream in REM sleep." By the way, if you know a bunch about fucking sleep information, don't get mad at me. This is what my brother said, all right? It's not on me, okay? I don't know anything about sleep, but I I openly say that. I'm not the one trying to tell somebody what fucking REM sleep is. I, I know the term from school, hearing it one time in class when I was 7 or 10 or whatever age I was, but that's all I know. I know I heard the term REM sleep was like, ooh, that sounds like cool sleep, and then the you know the rest of the information about the body just went out my fucking ear. Anyway, so my brother was saying REM sleep is where you have dreams, and I was like, yeah, but, but, Jello. <laughs> so we call my brother. Yeah, but Jello. 
Well, actually, I never call him that. His friends do. Doesn't matter. Jello. I have lots of dreams, and all of them are fucking psychotic. And then he's like, oh, well, then I don't know. People so willingly and immediately give you information about shit that when you say some, I'd even say something that was directly uh, putting him down. I was just saying information that I had about myself of like, oh, but I do dream. And then that just made my brother go, oh, well, then forget everything I just tried to tell you is fact. If you are that unconfident in the information you're about to give me, do me a favor. Don't give me the information. Because what if I didn't say that? What if I was like, uh, he was like, oh, do you ever dream? I'm like, oh, I don't really know. Then I would go around being like, oh, yeah, REM sleep. You can't dream or TVs don't bring you into REM sleep. See, I don't even know the, I don't even know what's right. I should look that shit up. I don't know if you dream in REM sleep or, or if you don't dream in REM sleep, but the TV actually prevents you from REM sleep. I don't fucking know. All I know is that when I watch TV and I wake up the next day, I fucking feel bad. And I do it every night. <laughs> but now I can't fall asleep without the TV on. That's the fucking problem. Isn't this riveting information? <laughs> This week, Jake talks about his sleep habits. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> then he talks about how he doesn't need to drink caffeine while drinking a monster on the podcast. While drinking drinking a child's vice on the podcast. I'm fucking Kyle, bro. I don't give a fuck. I am Kyle. All right. When they talk about Area 51, they talk about the Kyles. I'm part of that unit. I drink fucking so much goddamn monster that drywall forms around my hands as I walk through the streets. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm so Kyled up that I fucking break drywall from two feet away. I fucking force push smash through drywall. Do you understand, dude? Monster energy is so vibrantly oozing out of my system that it's creating a force field around my body that when I thrust my fist towards a wall, it could be 10 feet away. The fucking monster energy force will hit the wall and cave that fucking drywall in. Okay. And that's what I drink. The blues, dude. When I drink the greens, oh fuck. I'm totally Kyle at that point. I'm fucking Drake Bell in Amanda show drinking monster as a hippie guy with an acoustic guitar breaking drywall. Do you understand? I'm a fucking townie and a hippie combined into one when I drink that green goddamn monster. When I get that those 50 grams of sugar inside of my body. I'm fucking so revved up, dude. I'm like a deuce, bro. <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense. What am I saying? Nothing I say makes sense. And guys, guess what? I haven't hit a single topic I wrote down on my sheet of paper yet. And we have four minutes left in the first half of this thing. Isn't that fucking sick? Isn't it sick when I just go off the top of my dome and say insane dumb shit? Oh, dude, it's so fucking dumb. Dude, I say fuck a lot, huh? <laughs> when this podcast gets popular... Or at least more people listen to it. Who knows what popular means? Um, uh, somebody's Somebody has to cut together a dub. Or just a montage of me saying fuck. Because it will... It it might be the, the uh, nail in the coffin of what like finally... You know, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, that finally makes me go... Yeah, I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm, I'm going to say that way less now. Because my podcast is 70% fuck. And... 30% information that no one wants to hear. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about, I don't know, Jonah Hill. <laughs> Dude, I saw Jonah Hill one time. 
And uh, I talked about this before. Dude, I fucking say that too much too. I've talked about this before. But um, on a previous podcast, I talked about uh, being bitter, a single bitter guy. And uh, like two years ago, I was... I was that being that guy, that single bitter douchebag, and I was waiting for a movie, and uh, I st- I see this plump man. Now there's nothing wrong with being plump, but I see a plump man in front of me, and he's with a beautiful woman, a fucking beautiful woman, and so the high school Jake in me, or like the just the just stupid little boy in me, the stupid bitter boy in me. Starts looking at them and just getting angry. Just being like, why the fuck is this girl with this guy? Like, this guy's gross. He seems awful. Like, fuck him. All of this information that's based off nothing. Just based off me being an asshole in my brain. Like, these are things I would never say to somebody or say to the person I'm getting angry at for no reason. But I just just brought up this cocktail of shittiness in my brain. And I'm just getting angry at him. And then I'm like thinking about her. And I'm like, why is she with this dude? But then I start thinking like, Jake, that you're being fucking dumb and sexist. Because you're like, what are you thinking that this girl, if this girl likes this guy that you think sucks, obviously she sucks. And then I'm just getting angry at these two people I don't fucking know. (laughs) Because, because the guy is a little plumper than she is. Because she's very thin and he's plump. And that makes me mad for some dumb reason. Um... And then, so then uh, he goes up to the kiosk and I see the guy's face light up and then the guy talks, the plump man talks and says, can I get two tickets for Moonlight? And then I realize, oh, that sounds like Jonah Hill. And then they walk away and then I go up to the kiosk. I go, was that Jonah Hill? And the guy goes, yep. And then in my brain, I went, oh, it all makes sense then. (laughs) Oh, okay. Jonah Hill seems like a cool enough guy and he's, you know, he's a fucking celebrity and he has a lot of money. You know, he's a very talented man. That's something to love. <laughs> so rude to plump people. <laughs> I'm like, that's so fucked up. I literally was standing there getting angry being like, there's no way this beautiful woman likes this chubby guy. And then as soon as I found out he was Jonah Hill, I was like, oh, she does because he's talented. <laughs> Uh, what a fucked up. And here's the thing. I didn't mean, I didn't, I don't mean any of those thoughts. What it is, is it's the bitter shittiness in your brain. It's your own insecurity and bitterness brewing in your mind. That's why I don't voice those things. Cause I know when it's happening, Jake, you're just being a fucking asshole because you're sad and alone. Fucking find a girlfriend and be nicer in your mind. <laughs> Um, okay, that's the first half. Let's go into the second half. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, I'm back. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. I feel bad, man. I feel bad about that. Uh, and then I'm walking to the, to my movie and he's just in front of me. I think I was seeing Manchester by the sea or something. Um, he was talking, and then and then people in front of me started like seeing Jonah Hill and being like, "Whoa, oh, whoa!" He's like, "Oh, hey, man!" He's like trying to play it cool, trying not to have a lot of people come up to him. And then I'm just behind him, feeling bad. I'm behind him, feeling bad for, <laughs> feeling bad for everyone, feeling bad for chubby people, feeling bad for being shitty towards Jonah Hill for no reason, just feeling bad <laughs> in general. Um. And then I went and saw Manchester by the Sea, and it was a fucking amazing movie, and uh, I really liked it a lot. And then a month later, people were like, yo, Casey Affleck, not the best guy. And I was like, ah, fuck. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, thank God I saw that movie before I knew, because I had a very untainted experience with it. (laughs) I'm like, if Casey Affleck is that guy, fuck, that's fucking terrible. Fuck him. But I can't take away what that fucking movie did, man. That's a fucking good movie. It is. It's a really good movie. Which makes it more fucked. Because you're like, damn, that was such a good movie. What a great performance. And then you find out he's an asshole. And you're like, what the fuck, dude? How could someone be so ta- someone so talented do something shitty like that? 
It's like Kevin Spacey. <laughs> oh my god. It's funny because with with the Manchester by the Sea, I was like, oh, thank God I didn't know beforehand because I got to just experience the movie as a movie. But then with Kevin Spacey, when that came out, I mean, this is a fucked up selfish thing, but I was like, well, at least I don't have to watch House of Cards anymore. <laughs> I did, dude. That was the that was one of the first thoughts I had. I I'm gonna be honest. House of Cards was a show that everybody told me to watch everybody all the time. And I will always was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't want to watch that show. Like, I, you know, before the whole Kevin Spacey thing, I was like, yeah, I like him as an actor, but I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't want to watch him as a president Trump or whatever the fuck that show is. Right. Isn't it like he's a shitty president and then everyone's comparing it to like, times now i mean part of the reason why people say the show got worse is because um before even kevin spacey got fired from it was that uh the world just got crazier than any idea they could have thought up which i guess makes sense um but is the house of cards like dark i don't know i feel like tonally it's different right like the world is uh very insane right now, but like it, the things happening right now wouldn't fit in House of Cards, though, right? Because of the tone. I don't. I don't watch the show. All I know is Kevin Spacey is a child fucking asshole, and now I don't have to watch that goddamn show. <laughs> Check, please. Thank you for saving me nineteen fucking hours. <laughs> I watched Let's Be Frank. That's the most House of Cards I ever watched. Was his video. Let's be frank, where he was being the cat. He was confessing to a crime while being the character from a sh from a show. What, dude? That video should have been titled "I I Did It." <laughs> Let's be frank. Dash. I did it. Everything I'm accused of. I've done. You don't even need to watch the video. You just read Let's Be Frank, and then you know, oh, okay, it's a double entendre because he's playing Frank Un Underwood, and then he's also trying to be upfront and honest with you guys. Oh, okay, let's not watch the video. This guy did it. And then you watch the video, and you go, wow. You go two things. You go, wow, this guy's an amazing actor. <laughs> And also, oh, he definitely is a pile of shit who did everything he's accused of. Because what innocent person makes a writes a monologue for himself or gets someone else to write a monologue for them of a fictional character so they can uh, address their actual sexual assault allegations? What? Life really is stranger than fucking fiction nowadays, huh? That's fucking so... What? That's like one... If you wrote that in a in a movie or in a show, it'd be the one of the funniest things ever. You'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe you thought of that. That's so fucking crazy and stupid, but I love it. It's so funny. And then a human being actually does it in real life and you go, what the fuck is going on? Hey, Kevin, do we put the cuffs on you now? <laughs> What's going on, dude? Then he does a fucking live poem in Rome. Wha Kevin, what are you doing, dude? Just go to jail. Either go to jail or just shut the fuck up and hide forever. Like what? I don't. No one wants to hear from you anymore, man. And every time you do, everyone's like, yeah, I think you are, you did it. <laughs> oh man. He's got to be the, the, the most, the most botched person of all of the people, right?
that whole thing when he tweeted and he he, he tried to come out to 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 <laughs> he tried to deflect the sexual assault allegation of a 14 year old boy by going. I mean, that sounds like something I could have done, and I'm, if I did do that, I'm very sorry. So kind of admitting to it, and then being like, but now this is a good moment to come out as a gay man. Oh, no, it's not, dude. <laughs> no, nah, this is the worst moment of all time. Don't do this. <laughs> Someone posted a meme. It's probably the funniest meme I've ever seen. And the meme is uh, it's a Star Wars meme. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's Darth Vader and Obi-Wan fighting. And, um, the moment, it's that moment where he says, uh, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you could have ever imagine. And, uh, it's Kevin Spacey's face edited onto Obi-Wan's and it says, uh, maybe I can put it up in the, in the video, but it says, um. If you sh- if you if you accuse me of sexual assault, I will become gayer than you can ever imagine. <laughs> Which is the fucking funniest thing of all time. <laughs> Cuz that's literally like his thought process. As Kevin Spacey was like, "Oh, you accuse me of sexual assault? Hey guys, I'm gay. Is it cool? Am I'm fine now, right?" No, dude, you're not fine. First of all, we already kind of knew, and we were fine with it. And second of all, you still assaulted somebody, dude. (laughs) What? (laughs) And second of all, you still hurt a child, you fucking piece of shit. Anyway. um, Let's talk about... Let's talk about Fredo. So Chris Cuomo recently was called Fredo on TV. Or no, not on TV. Somebody came to an event he was at or something. Um, I saw the video. I don't know where they were. It looked like he was at some... I don't know. It could have been on the fucking street. It looked like they were in a tent or something. A giant tent. Maybe he he was just speaking or something. I don't know. He had a baseball cap on. He looked very... Uh, it looked like they were behind stage at some sort of event that was underneath a tent. Maybe it was a corporate thing. I don't fucking know. But this guy apparently calls him Fredo. And then Chris Cuomo was freaking the fuck out and being like... You don't call me Fredo, dude. Oh, you think my name's Fredo? The guy's like, oh, I thought your name was Fredo. I thought that was your name. The guy doesn't think that's his name. The guy's clearly... the guy. Here's the thing. The guy is clearly fucking with Chris Cuomo. He's clearly calling him Fredo because he thinks it's funny. And, you know, f- for those of you who don't know, I don't know how you don't know. If you haven't seen The Godfather, are you even alive? What's going on? <laughs> I understand that I'm Italian. If you guys don't know, I'm Italian, okay? If you're just tuning into this podcast, it's been addressed before. You got to address it if you're a fucking greasy Italian fuck. No, but I'm Italian. My dad's from Italy. Came over here when he was, when he was eight. So, of course, I've seen The Godfather. But even if you have are an Italian, it's one of the it's known as one of the greatest movies of all time. Martin Scorsese, one of the greatest directors. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro's in the second one. Greatest Italian actors of all time. You should you should have seen the the movie, okay? Uh, I guess you have to see part two to know. Whatever. I didn't see part two. I know who fucking Fredo is. That's the point. And that's not because I'm Italian. Fuck you if that's what you think. It's because it's a popular piece of pop culture, okay? That's why they call it pop culture, because it's popular. It's an important piece of pop culture. Anyway, Fredo um, is Al Pacino's dumb fucking brother, who betrays him and also is just an idiot and a buffoon and not the best guy. So people usually say Fredo as just an insult of like, oh, you're dumb or you're treacherous and traitorous. That's what it is. So they are, they, they, they showed like once this happened, this video of this guy calling Chris Cuomo, uh, uh, fucking Fredo. He get like he got all pissed off, and then, you know, people made a montage of him saying Fredo. This is what happened. 
Chris Cuomo got called Fredo at a rally or some shit. Okay? Or whatever, wherever he was. Underneath the tent, backstage somewhere, he got called Fredo in this weird fucking video that is the low angle of their faces. He gets called Fredo. He freaks the fuck out. And he says in the video, uh, that's like the N-word for Italians. <laughs> okay. As an Italian... Let me tell you right now, Fredo is not a, a slur. And that's the thing, too, is that CNN then came out and defended him and was like, uh, Chris Cuomo was called an ethnic slur. Fredo is not an ethnic slur. It's not a slur towards Italians. It's a slur towards brothers, maybe. It's like, hey, you're a fucking idiot. If anything, you could call it ableist, maybe, maybe, but that would be a stretch. Okay. Now, there are slurs for Italian people, okay? Guinea is one of them. Uh, Wop is one of them. Dago is one of them. Goomba is one of them, okay? So, he really got me thinking, because not a lot of people, I guess because people aren't Italian, so they don't want to say those words, it's fine. My dad's from Italy. I got the, I got, <laughs> I got the fucking... The, the pasta sauce in my veins, okay? I'm allowed to say those words. Anyway, those those are the, the slurs. Like, those are words that would all be rude to call an Italian and fucked up. And so out of those, maybe Guinea is the closest to, like, the, the, the N-word for Italian people. But even that is not the N-word for Italian people. <laughs> Even the worst Italian slur you could say to an Italian person is not as bad as saying the N-word. And I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> I think that's very fucking clear, right? Also, the thing about that whole video that's amazing to me is that... He gets so mad that the guy calls him Fredo to the point where he's saying, I'll throw you down those fucking stairs to the point where he turns into an Italian man and goes, I'll fucking beat the fuck out of you, bro. I'll fucking throw you down those, those stairs, you fucking cocksucker. Like he turns into a full blown stereotype. But like, that's from Fredo. Imagine if the guy called him a guinea. Imagine if he was like, yo, Chrissy the guinea, what's going on? Hey, Goomba Chris, what the fuck's happening? I think Chris Cuomo would have killed him. I think, I think, <laughs> I think that man would have been murdered if 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 he called Chris Cuomo an actual Italian slur. He would have been stabbed to death. And again, if Chris Cuomo would have done that, would have killed him on the spot. Again, that's a ve that's that would be a very Italian thing to do. <laughs> What'd you fucking say to me? Do it in the back of the fucking head. What the fuck did you just say? What the fuck? You just called me Chrissy the Guinea? Hey, Mario, take this fucker out. <laughs> Mario Cuomo, his father, who I think is dead maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and think. I don't, even, I don't think he, I think he knows it's not an Italian slur. I think that, because apparently a lot of people have been calling him Fredo online, like a lot of, uh, Republican people or alt right people or whoever the fuck. I don't not to conflate those two. Because they're very different. <laughs> um but uh I think a lot of people have been people on the right have been calling him Fredo on like forums and shit. So I think it just became like a pent up thing and then somebody called it to him to his face and he just didn't know what to do and he freaked the fuck out and like his brain just went to like how do I how do I make Fredo sound like the worst thing you can say to a person? Oh, I know. I'll compare it to a word that literally has no competitor. <laughs> Here's the thing about 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 the N word in general. There's stop comparing other words to it. Like it's not the same. Especially if we're in America, it's not the same. That's the worst word. Okay, that's the worst one. That's the worst word you could say. 
definitely in the U.S., okay? So stop comparing other words to it. Like, other words that you compare to it, they're not good things to say, but they're not close, okay? Take a step back and realize that you don't know what the fuck you're saying. (laughs) Also, the next day, why didn't Chris Cuomo just say, guys, I compared it to the N-word. That was a fucking stupid thing to do. It's not, it's clearly not as bad as that. Also, uh, uh, the real Italian slurs are Guinea, WAP, Dago, and Goomba. Um, If I was called any of those, again, would still be fucked up, but wouldn't be the same as the fucking (laughs) N-word. Like, it just wouldn't, it's not the same thing, dude. They're bad words, don't say them to Italian people, but again, not the same thing. Anyway, I guess that's enough of that. All right, Fredo. All right, Chrissy Fredo. Goomba Fredo. People should start calling that Goomba Fredo. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to talk about it. It's funny, though, because people uh, people have been taking this moment just to be blatantly fucked up towards Italian people. <laughs> In probably not an okay way. Like, I saw some girl who was like, she posted, like, uh, something about, like, uh, it is terrible to call uh, Chris Cuomo Fredo. That's a horrible ethnic slur. So is, uh, so we, so instead we should call him dum dum spaghetti boy or like, uh, like a pasta spaghetti boy. Some, something with pasta and spaghetti, which again, isn't a horrible thing to say, but at the same time, you are being a fucking, <laughs> you are just being shitty towards Italian culture. Like you are being a piece of shit. Like that's not, that's not, you can do that. And I might even laugh, but you got to know that like, that's not. Like saying like, oh, spaghetti to like an Italian guy. Would you go to a Jewish guy and be like, hey, latkes. Like, don't do not do either of those things. It's fucking weird. Okay. It's not, it's not something I would advise for you to do. Um, you know, you wouldn't go to an Irish person and go, hey, you fucking drunk piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know. And that's the thing, too. You can make fun of Italian people. You could say spaghetti, all that shit. You could do whatever you want. I'm just saying, like, if you're a person who gets mad, like, you can't be an Irish person being like, oh, spaghetti boy. And then if someone comes up to you and goes, oh, I guess you're a drunk, you can't get mad at that point because you've already set the tone that you're okay with that kind of shit, (laughs) you know? Um... Anyway, Chrissy Fredo was, uh, he's a good guy. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I I feel bad for him. It was a fucking embarrassing video to watch. It was fucking, it was so cringy. It was just like, so like, oh man, it felt like it really exposed the guy. Like he really was exposed to be just like insecure as hell, you know? Like that was so, just calm down, dude. If somebody called me Fredo. I'll go, this is literally what happened if someone called me Fredo. What's up, dude? Fredo, you called me Fredo? What? (laughs) What are you talking about, Fredo? Oh, I thought that was your name. Oh, you you thought that was my name? Yeah. You really thought that was my name? Oh, yeah, I thought that was your name. Come on, dude, you didn't think that was my name. You, you're fucking with me. You're trying to, you're trying to make fun of me. No, no, I thought it was, I thought it was your name, bro. Nah, you didn't. Come on. You, you, you're, you're saying that to make fun of me. And then if the guy, I bet you the guy would have admitted it. Yeah, I'm fuck. I'm fucking with you. I'd be like, all right, dude, come on, be a little more respectful. It's all good. What, 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 what background are you? What are you? Are you Irish? What, what's going on with you? I don't know. Why I'm picking on the Irish, <laughs> but that's what I would ask the guy. I would have asked the guy, like, what are you? Are you Irish? Are you Italian? If I came up to you and called you Fredo, I mean, he he kind of tries to do something like that. He's like, are you Italian? That's an insult to your fucking people. That's an insult. To-. He takes it all too seriously. If he just fucking took the Fredo in stride and was like, dude, you don't think that's my name. You're being silly. You're being silly, dude. Then he would have came out. That would have been a great video. They would have had nothing to expose. And if they did then show that video, he would have looked fucking sick. If he was just like, oh, okay, 
listen, dude, call me a guinea. If you have some balls, call me some fucking actual, call me an actual ethnic slur, okay? If you want to insult me, don't, don't, don't fucking be soft about it and call me Fredo. Go, call me a Dago and then we'll enter this arena, okay? Call me something for real and then we'll fucking decide what's going to happen. But don't come up to me and go, oh, Fredo, oh, the softest Italian insult you could think of, which isn't even an Italian insult. Get the fuck out of my face, dude. Like, why didn't he do something like that? You know? I don't know. None of this matters. <laughs> anyway. So what else we got? got Bernadette. I got hot dog spaghetti. I'll talk about hot dog spaghetti. So a friend of mine at the beach, I forgot to talk about this on one, on, on whatever podcast I went to the beach at. I think it was two ago. And, um, a friend of mine was like, Hey, I got this really good idea. Uh, like a food idea. I think it would be really popular. Or he didn't even say it would be really popular. He just goes, I have this really good idea. And we go, okay, what is it? And he goes, hot dog spaghetti. Now, what do you think of when you hear that? Hot dog spaghetti. Because I immediately think of a hot dog wrapped in spaghetti. You know, like a pretzel hot dog, but with spaghetti. And I'm like, you know, that's not a terrible idea. Like, I could see somebody eating that. Like, you deep fry the fucking spaghetti or something like that. I could see it happening. Um, and then I go, who would eat that? I go, would you eat that? He goes, no, probably not. But then, but then, I, but, so I'm thinking it's that. So then I say that to him. I go, oh, what's it, like a hot dog with spaghetti wrapped around it? And he goes, no, it's hot dog spaghetti. Like, it's hot dog made to be spaghetti. To which I looked at him and went, what? <laughs> Excuse me, what? He goes, hot dog spaghetti, like you, like the same way you make pasta, you make it, you instead take hot dogs and make the hot dogs spaghetti shaped. And I was like, who wants to eat that much hot dog? I go, what do you put on it? He goes, well, you put, you put ketchup on it. And I said, so you just have a bowl of fucking hot dog shaped like spaghetti and you would drown it in ketchup? Who wants to eat that much ketchup? Who wants to eat that much hot dog? And he was like, I don't know. I, I, I think people would eat it. I go, I go, would you eat it? He goes, no, that'd be disgusting. I go, then what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, yeah, there's plenty of foods that are disgusting that, that people eat, though, that are really popular. And I go, name one. And he goes, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, if you bring up a disgusting food item and you're bringing it up to be like, this is going to be really popular, this would be so this would be so fucking off the chain and successful. And then... I I come back with this with a simple name one other thing that's disgusting like this that's popular and you go I don't know if that's the case the the idea is bad <laughs> the idea is not good and then the funny thing was he kept thinking of other things that are hot dog like he's like well, what about a, a hot dog shaped into a pretzel and I was like yeah that might be okay because at least it's still hot dog shaped and then you could like you could put ketchup and mustard like on the hot dog part that makes sense and then his girlfriend goes why don't you just do um she goes well why don't you just make the hot dog spaghetti like into what like deep fry it and make it like a a, a corn dog spaghetti thing so it's like funnel cake but it's a hot dog and i was like holy fuck that's an amazing idea 
And then she says, and then we just found out that like, oh, any hot dog idea, if you make it a corn dog, it's better. You know why? Because a hot dog needs to be encased in something. Because no one, I mean, I've been the guy who just takes a hot dog straight off the grill and eats the hot dog straight. But most people need some sort of fucking encasing to slide that meat gunk down your throat. That fucking cylinder of garbage. Whatever, whatever, what's it, what's it, just pig asshole is in a hot dog? Every time I ask what's in a hot dog, I feel like everyone just goes, oh, you know, all the bad parts of the animal. <laughs> it's probably why it tastes so good, you know? But, um, yeah. And then the same thing with the hot dog pretzel. It's like, oh, turn that into a corn dog pretzel, and that's a fucking amazing idea. So, guys, when in doubt, corn dog it out. Um, Yeah. This camera, it runs out after every 30, 30 minutes. I don't know. I might hack into it. Apparently, you can hack into these cameras and uh, like download a uh, workaround that lets it just record for a full hour or as long as you want. I might do that because the brakes fuck me up, I think. Also, maybe I'll make this podcast a little bit longer, a little longer than an hour. You know, I feel pressure to end it right on the right time. Like right now, there's like 15 seconds left. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't really have time to talk about something else. But if this camera would just fucking go, then I would just, you know, pontificate for maybe an hour and 15 minutes, you know? Also, you would never have to hear that fucking alarm sound ever again, like you're goddamn waking up for work in the morning. (laughs) I like this podcast. What the fuck, dude? I set an alarm the other night because I want to remember to leave my friend's apartment, and then it went off, and my and his roommate looks at me. Well, I, I guess I'm I'm friends with her too now, but she looks at me and goes, uh, "Is that an alarm?" And I go, "Yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to for forget to leave." And she goes, "Get out." <laughs> Listen, that's a compliment to you. If I have to set an alarm to leave your apartment, that means you guys are so freaking fun that I lose track of time all the time. All right, let's end on that note. You got guys, get friends that are so freaking fun that you need to set an alarm to know that you got to leave. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm fucking out of my mind. Come to the show September 1st, Sunday, Pine Box Rock Shop, 7 o'clock doors, 7.30 p.m. show. It's free. Um, I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're Jake, you don't make any sense. Jake, you're a piece of shit. A piece of shit.